He's back. Good morning, Breakfast of Bacon fans. As you see on the screen is my friend Xavier Reyes Aral, the author of the book Revelations, um, the hidden secret testimonies and prophecies of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And the book is already going into, I think, what, three languages being sold around the world. Is, is that French is coming out from you, Spanish, Polish? Polish and Croatian. And Croatian, yes. So the it, which is funny because you're a Frenchman and the French isn't out yet, right? No, I, I, I the last two, uh, three books I wrote, I began them in French and then I translated them in other languages. This one, I wanted to do it uh, in English first, in honor of, of the Americans. I live here. My wife, my my children are American, well, Franco American. So I wanted to do it in English first for the American yeah. people. The English well, thank people. you. We, we appreciate that. Although your French brothers and sisters are probably like, excuse me, <laughs> <laughs> where's our copy? <laughs> so, but it's coming. <laughs> well, I had you on because a good friend of yours and someone who I love dearly, Father Michel Rodrigue, um, has been in your life and he's uh, been giving you, well, you've been talking and he talked to you about a message he was given in December and he said, do not tell this message until February. Now it's not about anything devastating. It's not about bombs. It's not about, you know, dates that the Antichrist is going to appear, but it is a message that says to us to be prepared. Um, mm -hmm. So you so graciously decided to come on and I'd love for you to share that message. And let's see if we can continue your and my mutual journey towards winning as many souls for Christ, getting as many people prepared for what we see as imminent and, um, you know, just do what we think is God's will to be done. Do you mind sharing? Absolutely. Absolutely. I have the message here. I, I just want to give you also some update. Um, Father Michel is also uh, has attracted the attention of a lot of people in, uh, in Europe and Germany, Italy, even Spain, which surprised me a lot, but even in my own country. And a couple of the ex-collaborators uh, of uh, Father René Laurentin, with whom I work for, uh, are very intrigued with uh, Father Michel. And um, they, they want, for instance, they, they want to know more about the history of his life, all the content of all his past messages. So I've been sending uh, quite a bit of, uh, of news. And uh, those men were men that used to work at the side of Laurentin. One of them is a a theologian that used to work side by side with Father Laurentin, and he's getting a lot of popularity and a lot of support. So, um, so far, so good. So, I'm very happy for the the man. I spoke with him yesterday. Uh, we barely, we for a brief more period of time, we spoke about you, and um, and also of Monique from uh, uh, Mother, Mother of Refuge, Refuge. of End Times. Exactly. So, anyway. I have the message here. Well, and before you read it, actually, I just want to make sure I put out there, you know, people make their comments. So, so many people around the world watch and love Father Michel. But I do get the other people who will comment and say, he's been disapproved. He said things that didn't happen. <laughs> and and we've already talked about that in past shows. And I just want to stress this is that he says nothing that has gone against church teaching. He has not been disavowed by the church. As we remind those who maybe don't know this for the first time they're watching, but there are three statuses, those that the church rejects and have been disapproved, those who the church approves um, as, you know, prophetic or approved messages. And then those who are still in the process of being discerned. What, what did he say? Cause I know I was dying to hear what he said back when you, you and I did our last show in January and you told me I had to wait till <laughs> February. So I waited and here we are. So do you mind sharing the message? Oh, I, I don't mind at all. There it is. This was given on December the 31st. 2023 on the feast uh feast day of the holy family to so father michel from god the father from god the father okay okay so this is the message my dear children the time you live now is a gift to allow all those of goodwill to celebrate the birth of my son jesus i have opened this space for you in order to give comfort to your hearts 
and to allow you to respond to your faith, to the love of Jesus, who took flesh to save you. On this day of the Holy Family, may all the families of the earth be blessed, who welcome my beloved Son in hope. Take the Holy Family into your home. She alone will protect you in these coming times. Remember, I already told you, the punishment will stop for the houses where the Holy Family is exposed and prayed with respect. Yes, the love of my Son who suffered for you, born from the virginal purity of my daughter, Mary, and protected by the very pure and powerful love of the just and loyal Joseph is your protection. Hold your heart ready and awake. Have what you need to nourish your body and treat it with the remedies that I have already given to many of my saints to protect you. Use holy water regularly to chase away the bad angels who lurk near your homes. It is not for nothing that the last day of the, this year falls on the feast of the Holy Family. She is the sign to remind you of everything I told you. It is a sign of your protection. It is not in vain that the Church celebrates the motherhood of Mary, mother of my son Jesus, on the first of the year. Because in this time of yours, her immaculate heart will triumph. This year, which begins tomorrow, is a year of pure faith. All the signs have been given. John the Apostle lifted the veil. Blinded are those who do not believe. Deaf are those who do not hear. And dumb are the lukewarm. The spirit of a spiritual Amorosis invades humanity. There is no longer any vision, no understanding, no sense. Humanity does not see what is coming. Mm. My children will not be affected by this darkness. Events will speak. Blessed are those who hear the word of God. Yes, dedicate yourself to my most holy family to my son, to Mary, his mother, and my daughter, to Joseph, my son, whom Jesus called Father on earth. Consecrate yourself for the fidelity of my church. Everything will be accomplished, and not one iota of what my son Jesus taught and which the church has solemnly declared will be lost. Amen. Your heavenly Father, who loves you. Yeah. That's the message. That's a message of love. It's a message of a parent who says, I love you, so I need to remind you to stay, stay under my watchful care because things are about to happen and there's no dates, but there is this uh, a gentle urgency. Would you agree with that? It, it's a gentle, it's not like prepare now, 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 it's going to happen, but it is urgency that sounds it's framed gently that you need to be prepared i've got everything down there rely on the family it, it what did you get from it when you heard it because you've not heard it and read it many times i would presume i did i i got this message on january the first um i will be very frank with you and with your auditors christine um when uh, I took an, a rendezvous with Father Michel Rodrigue on January the 1st of this year. Mm -hmm. At that time, I took my children, my wife, um, to Orlando, to Universal. Mm -hmm. For one simple reason. Um, I wanted my children. I wanted to hear my children's belly laugh, uh, having fun, because I'm not certain that this will ever be possible, possible again. again. I know that some people will think how exaggerate. Well... I'm, I did the bet of Pascal. If um, if I'm wrong, then we'll go back again. If I'm not, at least I have given a new set of memories to my children. In peace, without fanatism, uh, with a cold conscience. 
But uh, Father Michel asked, remarkably, it was not my idea, it was that he who asked to speak with me and to see my family on Zoom. So on January the 1st, uh, <laughs> I got my monkeys out of their pyjamas, the dress. I called my son, my daughter, was come by her mom. Father Michel called us and uh, he gave me this message as just radio, which he received uh, the day prior. You know, and we spoke. Uh, I spoke also and uh, this particular content of the message uh, a few days later when we came back from Orlando with uh, one of these two theologians I mentioned who used to work with Father Laurentin and we, we analyzed it. He is a very methodical gentleman who likes to study every single word, what this means and the what context. Yeah. We studied it in French. You now, what you heard was the English translation. So we were able to discern and put everything under microscope. And there are a couple of things that struck us. Number one, um, the fact that our Lord says, this will be a year of pure faith. This is alarming. I'll tell you why. Because for our pure faith to be invoked, something really grave, uh, the seriousness of which is difficult to establish, but something grave must be coming for people to absolutely maintain their stability, their uh, consciousness leveled simply because of pure faith. It's not very difficult to believe that, particularly in view of the fact that right now the events that are going out, coming out from Europe and the Middle East are more than alarming. No. Mm -hmm. um, I discussed also with uh, Father Lord, and that's another thing that immensely intrigued them. And I... Oh, Christine, I, I would have loved for Father Laurentin to be alive today because we would have had some some fierce conversations about all this. Yeah. But another thing that they were very impressed with was... Well, hold on. That... Are you getting off the faith thing? No. Oh, because well, I was going to say I recently did a video and it said, why does God value faith so much? Because... So many people pray, God, show me this. Show me, will my spouse come back? Will my child, you know, break the addiction? Will this happen? Will that? Show me, right? And I said, the reason God doesn't show you everything is because then you'd be using your own intellect and you wouldn't need to rely on your faith. And God treasures faith because faith says, I want, I trust you even if I don't see the logic, even if I don't see what's going to happen. Faith is saying, okay, I am all yours, no matter what I trust you. And that's why I really think faith is so important to God, because if we don't have faith, we're making ourselves mini gods. Like, okay, show me all the details, then I'll evaluate it. And if it's acceptable based on my standards, then I'll go ahead and act on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, I, well, I you're I... faith. Right, who well, you're faith. I mean, we're going to be trusting God for everything. Maybe food, maybe money, maybe safety. I don't know. Faith is everything. Mm -hmm. It's actually the cornerstone of our, of our religion, is it not? Mm -hmm. So uh, happy are those who believe without saying, although it's true. And I hear that, I've heard that over and over again. Always test, according to Paul, always test uh, all the prophets. And it is important to test, of course, the prophets. But when there is no contradiction with the dogma of the faith. Correct. When there is no contradiction, but a reinforcement thereof, then indeed blessed are those who believe without saying. It is when there is a contradiction or a new interpretation of the deposit of the faith that all the alarm bells should be ringing. In yeah. the case of Father Michel, uh, everything is based on faith. And also uh, the prophecies he made, for instance, in last summer, as I mentioned, even in September, I have a multitude of witnesses, including in the United States. Father um, um, Michel announced at the beginning of tribulations, and this is the observation of um, this theologian who worked with Father Laurentin, um, would begin in the month of October. Blast it all. In October was the beginning of tribulations. First, it was a turning around military speaking in Ukraine and the spreading of the war to the Middle East. When Hamas and Hezbollah attacked Israel, that was a prophecy that took place. And what's more remarkable, this French uh, theologian told me, Xavier, do you know who Father Oliveira is? I told him, honestly, I didn't. I think I heard Monique Turnbull from Mother and Refuge talk about it. But um, she's more an expert on the subject than I. And But this fellow knew, this gentleman knew. 
And he said, Father Oliveira said exactly the same thing. And he doesn't speak a word of English, only Portuguese. Father um, Michel, I'm tempted to say, only speaks French because his English, <laughs> his English, his is, English is costly. But he's good enough to be to be understood. Yeah. So there was no way of interaction between the two. They don't. They, and Father Michel was more... Uh, picks up the phone only when he recognizes phone numbers and when he knows by God the Father when to answer. So that was very intriguing, all this. No? But faith, you're absolutely right, is the cornerstone of our religion, uh, Christine. You couldn't be more right. So in this instance, that was one of the things that struck us, well, principally this theologian gentleman who is considerably more of an expert than I. Uh, there was another thing, the importance of the Holy Family. You know? Being a uh, pre principal shield against the chastisements of the that to come. Clearly, and I spoke yesterday with Father Michel on the subject, the Holy Family, and a lot of people in the other previous shows that I did, tomorrow I'm doing one in French, no, the day after tomorrow I'm doing one in French, with France. Uh, one of the principal um, questions that we get is, should it be a picture? Should it be a painting? Should it be figurines? Should it be a... Um, um, a nativity scene, should it be statuettes? No, what could it what does it mean by the holy family? It could be any of those things. Yeah. It could be a painting, picture, anything. I have my wife bought an um, a beautiful st Italian statue this big with the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Child Jesus with Saint Joseph, uh, in the bed when you uh, a costume normally and it's gorgeous. We had it blessed by a priest and it sits in a place of honor in the house. Now, Father Michel confirmed all the homes that will have this in a place of honor and where it's going to be prayed and respected or prayed with respect, those homes will be protected from the chastisement that are coming and all the people inside and all the goods inside. So this is messages of primary importance. And why the Holy Family? Simply because according to Father Michel Rodrigue, and he's not the first one to have said that, but according to him, and that I spoke with him yesterday about it, the Holy Family is one of the principal targets of the devil, of the devil, of the enemy of God. And you can, you don't have to look very far to see the evidence of that. Rome, this glorious Father James, a Jesuit, Société de Jésus. No? He is putting everything he can in the lobby to influence not only Francis, but all the lobbies inside the church to welcome and to accept uh, the act of homosexuality and those who let themselves go through it. To be homosexual is not a sin. That's not at all what it is. is right. No. There are some men that are extraordinary that have homosexual tendencies. And they've That's lived not chaste lives. That's right. Exactly. It is a it is a cross that these men are uh, are bearing upon themselves. It is the act itself which is sinful because it's contrary to all the laws of nature and it's contrary to all the laws of God to let yourself go through this particular sin. The, the um, tendencies in themselves is a fight that some men have to fight for, and women. Right. But that's a cross we all, that those men and those women have to bear. So the Holy Family is attacked in the sense that many men, many women sometimes are called to or are tempted to disunify and to go elsewhere. Homosexuality of two men, two women adopting children because there is no other way they could have any. And that should give you also a hint. No? Worse this than adopting, crime... purchasing, purchasing, okay. doing surrogacy, paying a woman to to, you know, let me choose my the the you know, which egg I'm gonna use, let me choose with sperm. And then I did a show recently about the trauma faced by children who are born of sperm donors the children who were born into homes with two two parents of the same sex it's like it's not that i'm not loved by them it's that i'm missing the love of another parent it's just all these you know horrible things that we don't talk about right so the holy family i would presume you're leaning into is showing that the the beauty of the natural order a mom and a dad and a child children that's what's and Father Michel was pointing that out as one of the principal messages he's getting. The family will be targeted, is targeted already yeah. within the hierarchy of the church and within society itself. And that is why this, the Holy Family, which you see a beautiful, mm, pain, it's beautiful. representation behind me. Um, but this, the family should be, 
is called to be our star of Bethlehem. A true compass that always sh will show true north is our example. And that is part of the message, among many other aspects thereof, that Father Michel is receiving uh, ever so often uh, from God the Father. Another matter also involves the fact that uh, he's been receiving multitude of invitations from other podcasts. He was told, uh, for the time being, not to accept any, but the time will come just at the end, when he will be um, he will be accepting of... those. He will tell me when to bring forth a message of preparation when the time comes. Very much in a different way, like Conchita, but his mission is not, it's only starting now. And um, I know that he asked me as well to convey uh, all his best wishes, wishes uh, to those who supported him and also to those who doubt he prays for uh, all the people who uh, have doubted to be eliminated. He gives his blessing and his love. And uh, voila, I think uh, the man is extraordinary. Uh, he intrigues me a lot. He knows how to be very jovial. He laughs. He has the laughter come to him easy. But I, when I went to Quebec, Christine, I, uh, there are times when he can be very phlegmatic and very serious. He has gone through some experiences with our visions and apparitions, which left him, uh, which left him uh, white with um, an an anguish. Um, I'll tell you another anecdote very quickly, if your time permits. Now, when I went to Quebec, I was speaking to my brother Philippe. Now we are very old friends. He and I, we 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 are very French, and we grew up with the stories of World War One, World War Two, from the family members who participated therein. So, and there are some funny stories too. My uncle Jean was an officer of the Free French Army. And every time he came back from mission from Occupy France back to London, he had a journal where he wrote everything. And I wrote a book about him in France in 2013. Now, so, and he came back with some stories that were very, very funny. And I told, and I thought, and Philippe told me, Xavier, uh, look, uh, after dinner, because after dinner, there is in the living, in the dining room of the main office, Underneath there is like a under apartment mm -hmm. uh, where he has not very many wines, but he had a he had one of the brothers buy a Grand Marnier for me. He knows I love cognac with orange, and uh, so he wanted to have a um, to make me feel welcome. I was on the very first and second day, so Philippe told me, my brother, told me, look, tell, he, he's always in this ambiance of prophecies, uh, prayers, missions of God. His priestly uh, religion, try to bring him back the taste of old France. Tell him the stories, the funny stories of Uncle Jean uh, in France. No? And I told him one that my Uncle Jean wrote where <laughs> he was very, very funny. It's a true story where in, um, in a building in Paris was requisitioned by the Waffen SS. And there was a concierge who was a lady whose son joined the Free French Navy uh, right after the invasion and the occupation of France. And he left her an old parrot that used to say, oh, Adolf Hitler kaput, Adolf Hitler kaput. So I told, was telling all this story to Father Michel. And this Nazi, uh, Waffen SS, black cap, young man, 25, blonde, blue eyes, every time passed in front of the lodge, the blooming bird oh, never lacked an opportunity to say Adolf Hitler kaput. No? One day the German had enough, entered into the lodge and threatened the woman that if he ever heard the, the, that the bloody creature say Adolf Hitler kaput, he would cut his head. So the lady crossed the street and there was a priest uh, who had an exact same looking uh, parrot and said, Oh, Father, Father, let's exchange parrots, please. And at the moment of liberation, you'll return me, my son, parrot, and it will be over. Ah, oh, the liberation, my daughter. May God hear you. Of course, of course. I will exchange and, uh, when the gold comes back. So the next day, the German passes by in front of the lodge in silence. The bird says nothing. He comes back again on purpose to give him to have a reason to kill it. Silence. He rushes in, and now the German says, Oh, you bloody animal. Now that I want you to say Adolf Hitler kaput, you say nothing. Come on, say it once, say it twice. Adolf Hitler kaput. And the bird said, Oh, may God hear you, my son. May God hear you. No? So, <laughs> because he was repeating what the priest told him. Right. And so the, 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 the German had no idea what to do. But in French, when you said his story in French, with a little uh, anecdotes, with a turnaround, with the French language, he's hilarious. I've never seen Father Michel laugh so hard in his life. He was crying. He took off his glasses. For one moment, I had a moment of utmost, how can I say it, uh, profound 
uh, satisfaction. I was able for even for a brief moment of time to take him away and bring from him all the laughter. problems. Yeah. Exactly. And to take him into my world, all France, French spirit, you know, and and it was delightful. And and he couldn't stop laughing. He was crying and all the people were, were laughing. It was a story, a true story too. And the man is, uh, he intrigues me, Christine, because uh, he's a paradox in a sort of way. He can be, I think he tries to diffuse the tension when he brings some of these messages whose gravity are ever so serious and the consequences yeah. are very frightening. Yeah. But that's why he, he comes up always sometimes so so happy. He's trying to calm down and not to be a prophet of doom, like John the twenty third used to call the children of Fatima. No. Yeah. So but as I said, I had long conversations with him. He's very serious. I spoke with witnesses who confirmed that indeed after the celebration of the Eucharist, they heard him say on the 28th of December that the Pope would never see the year 2003. And he did the prophecy that the, the, the tribulations would start in October. And we all know what happened in the... Yeah, Chico well, and then this Cibola. October, we've got the final meetings of the, the Synod. So that is um, suggesting to bring... Perhaps not good change. Um, that may be the time where we get, don't know, but that may be the time where we get um, the false consecration. You know, we, you know, so we need to just pray. It's also the time in America when elections are happening. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, if you don't follow American politics, which I think most people do, there's just so much hatred and, and venom coming because uh, they don't want... Um, Donald Trump to run and you know I'm not a Trumpian uh, but I have never seen so much hate um, I'm not against him I'm just not one of those that's looks at him as the savior right so I'm looking at these big things in the world that are supposed to happen in this continued 2024 and it only points to the idea that what Father Michel said is this is probably very spot on to be prepared, be aware. Um, we don't know what's going to happen, but trust the Holy Family. Keep your eyes fixed on God. And um, I was talking to our mutual friend, Monique Turnbull from Mother and Refuge of End Times and today. And what we had both agreed is that, you know, I don't know if people do this to you, but a lot of people say, Christine, you should do this novena to the to the sacred face. You should do this novena to or to the holy face or to the sacred heart. You should do this novena. You should. And I wish I could do all of them because there's so many beautiful uh, practices, devotions, uh, consecrations out there. But I said, there is a consecration to the sacred heart of Jesus, which everybody should do because he's our Lord and savior. And there are a lot of people who've consecrated themselves to our mother Mary. There's a lot of people who've consecrated themselves to St. Joseph. And I thought, if you bring together the three most powerful individuals that walked this planet as a cohesive unit, the mother of God, God himself, obviously, and then the stepfather of God. If you consecrate yourself to all three of them and they are protecting you, it just seems like it's unstoppable. But the, the protection that you would get from that. And, uh, and I think maybe that's part of what Father Michel's message is conveying to us it, it, am i did you get something in addition or around that or yes uh again from my long conversations with um with this um theologian in france who doesn't want to be named by the way right i don't uh, blame him uh, yes. he'll bash he... him <laughs> well as we were reading all the messages we were able to gather of father michel received by father michel along the years another thing that to him uh gave him an accent of authenticity was the fact that he was told that uh, Saint Joseph, which you see here behind me now, uh, was called the defender um, of the Catholic Church. Yeah. One that was really discussed um, in the Bible. Uh, that made to him a great deal of sense. Another thing that also uh, to him gave him complete credibility. And that I, I would like really to call all the viewers who for some reason or others still do not believe or think he has been uh, condemned. He has never been condemned. 
let it be clear, I called also the Archdiocese of Amos right. when I was in August. He's in good standing. Yep. The bishop does not simply believe, but he, he has the right, and we have to respect, but he has not been condemned or defrocked or taken from his responsibility. He's in good standing with the Archdiocese yep. of Amos and with Rome. However, uh, what what impressed a great deal, Father uh, René Laurentin's collaborator back home, back to my home in France, was this. That, as you know, I've, every time I finish my talks, I always bring this to light. And this comes from Father Michel. That the Virgin Mary and God, the Eternal Father, always asks the faithful. And if you decide to be against that, then it's your choice and your freedom. Mm -hmm. But the cornerstone of his messages is this. Convert, principally through by living your lives on the grounds of the Holy Scriptures, on the basis of the teachings of the Holy Scriptures, particularly that of the Holy Gospels, the teachings of Jesus Christ on the Holy Gospels and the deposit of faith. Lee convert by living through the sacraments of the Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church, no other church. Because the Catholic, Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church of all the Christian churches ever founded is the only one that has been founded by the Son of Christ God. Himself. Yeah. Exactly. And most particularly, Father Michel calls everyone to go to confession often, preferably on every first Saturday of every month, and to make a well careful, well thought out, with all the repentance you're able to gather, confession, not to the priest, but to God through the priest, and to us, not for the priest as absolution, but to God's of God's absolution, and simply to go every first Saturday of every month, and then to go to communion. Father Michel doesn't, is, is a gosier, as we say in French. He, talk, he repeats again and again how important the cornerstone of our faith is in the Holy Mass, to receive the body of Christ while be absolutely being certain, without any shadow of a doubt, that we're receiving his body and blood, his soul and the divinity every time we receive the Holy Eucharist. But, and he insists on this matter ever so much, we must receive him properly prepared in a state of grace. Yes. Particularly in view of the fact that today more and more we hear to the right and to the left without naming anyone that it is good enough to have a good heart and to want to get close to God and to embrace God and unite, because communion means common union, to be in complete union with him. It's all good and dandy, as you Americans say. But it's not enough. If, and Father Michel explained that carefully, if a person suspects himself or herself to have committed a great wrong, even a mortal sin, they, if they were to receive the body of Christ through the Holy Communion, the Holy Sacrament of the altar, they would receive a sacrilegious communion. They would do, they would receive so a I think the Bible says you're drinking your own condemnation. I think that's what St. Paul said. Anyone who receives the Eucharist unworthily drinks his own condemnation. And that's yes. that's horrible. The idea that every time you receive the Lord, if you've got a mortal sin, that yes. you're just making your condemnation deeper. I was like, Ugh. Yeah, absolutely. So in that effect, Father Michel inv invites and insists everyone: if you suspect you've done something wrong, if you're not comfortable with your conscience, if you've done something wrong, go to confession, and then once you're in a state of grace, receive the body of Christ. Yeah. So, again, to all the detractors of Father Michel, and I do respect them, because they had no way of knowing any of this. You know? So, to the, all of them, I tell them, if you're against Father Michel, you're against everything I just mentioned. And what you just mentioned is the dogma of the Catholic faith. The fact that, uh, and regarding this false prophecy that supposedly he's given, I've given you the explanation. He gave his, his own explanation. Yeah, right. First Several, with, times. Several, Several times. Several times. Beginning with John Henry Weston, with Monique, with you. No, the point. That's why reach. we just move on from that. You know, it's like we we you know what we love them. If you love them, you watch. If you don't, but you and I are trying to just push through a message that again, it's for people to discern. I don't see any way, like you just said, that you can think consecrating yourself to the Holy Family or having faith can in any way be seen as a negative or poor message. Anybody who delivers that message is you should be saying praise God. Praise God for that. That's the message we should be relying on God and relying not on ourselves, coming closer to God with every decision, with every, and I think it's, 
I want to be very careful how I say this, you know, good that some of these difficult things are happening in our world because they are causing many to turn back to God. They are causing many to go, oh, I'm seeing things that don't look right. What about this war? What about these, um, the currency, the market crashing, just all these things that are about to happen or are happening that people are going, well, what do I do? For instance, I spoke to a man, this man, uh, I will give no details. This man was a devout Catholic boy, altar server, um, and he was raised in the faith and he was molested by a priest. And so that traumatized him and he left the Catholic faith. And um, he's been away from the faith for many, many years. But recently he did, he did something. I think it's since no one knows what I'm talking about. He was like, I did something I think was very wrong. And he had consulted a, um, the people who read fortunes, a psychic. He had consulted a psychic for something. And as soon as he went, he felt the darkness. And he said, what do I do? What do I do? I think I've made a horrible mistake. And I said, go to confession. He hadn't been in a Catholic church for years. He was hurt by the church. And he said, I think that's what I need to do. So he went to confession to release himself of this sin. And the point of it is, God used that to start pulling him back in, even though he was hurt terribly. It doesn't make the Catholic Church less true. It says there are some bad people who have entered the church, but my church is still true. Come home. And so that's what I'm saying. I think God uses these dark things, whether it's my sin or someone else's, to open our eyes. And I think he's starting to open people's eyes here and there to go, come home. Soon you will see and know that the Catholic Church is the only church. And, and come and cover yourself within her. And, and obviously the mother, you know, the Holy family is, is that covering because Joseph covered Jesus, you know, it, it just, it's amazing to me, but God is um, shaking things up. I think there is, um, yes, but the enemy of God also is trying also to shake things up yes. because he knows his time is running out. And I think that one of the tactics he's adopting to pierce to me is that uh, with all the scandals that are coming from the church, with the last one taking, which took place uh, in uh, in December, just at the same time, or one day before or after the birthday of uh, uh, Francis, no? the fiducia supplicants. Yeah. This, this is uh, what the Catholic Church is doing, is presenting forth a new interpretation of our faith in regard to one particular specific um, situation involving uh, uh, Couples that are in no conformity or in not good standings with the Catholic Church. The purpose, I think, of this is to make some people so scandalized, so disgusted, uh, people into, yeah. leading people into believing that the Catholic Church is no longer one, that they would leave the Catholic Church. That's the trap. That's the trap, because right. that's exactly what the enemy of God wants, people to be so disgusted that they would leave something that they don't believe anymore, something that is preached that is no longer what... The faith they received of their, from their childhood taught them. So the purpose, the trap, is to fall into so much scandal, feeling scandalized that one wants to leave. That's the trap. It appears to me that one must remember that the Catholic Church is not just a hierarchy, which is uh, at the will of the Church in Rome. That's not the Catholic Church, or rather it's not just the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is all of us. It's you, me, everyone that is watching and listening to this show. That's the Catholic Church. In Rome, it's simply, those are the, simply the hierarchy of a ship that's in the middle of a tremendous storm, like Don Bosco used to say. In his vision, the Catholic Church was this massive wood ship of uh, uh, a man of, not a man of war, there was no cannons, but a massive ship that was navigating in one turbulent storm. I don't believe that the church has navigated in more turbulent storm as we are right now. For indeed, let's not fool ourselves. The Catholic Church, unless you are bad faith or simply utterly blind, is going through a civil war. Yeah. 
Yeah. Unquestionably. And the men that are at the wheel might not be those that we want at the present time, but let's remember one thing. The Catholic Church will never fall into the fires of the Hades. No, we were promised of this by Christ. And even Christ himself, for some reason, because it was the destiny of Judas to be what he was, Christ chose Judas. It was not Judas who chose Christ. There was a reason. Right. We must remain at the feet of the cross in complete cold head, cold headness. Uh, even catechism teaches us that the church must go through the same passion of the Christ as our Lord, through the Via Crucis. And right now we're definitely about to go up in Golgotha, yeah. where the church will be crucified, will be thought, buried and forgotten, but no. We it will be resurrect. Crown, but it exactly. It may be small, but it will be mighty. And, you know, I, I do actually look forward to those days. Part of me is like, well, when I die, it'll be great to be in heaven because there's nothing on earth that'll be that good. But the other part of me wants to be here for the triumph of the Immaculate Heart. I want to be here through the refuges. And it's going to need strong people like you and me. And, you know, I hopefully I'm strong. I consider myself strong um but i want to be here to help other people to kind of get through these these darknesses because how awesome will it look here after all of the church has been purged of the evil after the world where you walk down the street and everybody hears church bells and everybody goes praise at the same time everybody celebrates easter and christmas in the good and holy way and everybody doesn't work on sunday and no pornography on television no um just, just none of these evil things i mean we will still be people you know we're still going to be sinners but the triumph of god's immaculate heart i don't exactly know how that looks or uh, mary's immaculate heart you know what i mean i'm just yes I, there was I, another I thing that i spoke that. with uh, yeah. Father that might also be interesting uh, to you um that will also surprise them enormously no and that was the, the description of Father Michel about the illumination of conscience, the new Pentecost, as he calls it. The warning, right? right? El aviso, l'illumination de conscience. Uh, again, we spent, I mean, I bet you that as we speak, although it's right now uh, 1 o'clock, one fifteen in, in Paris, <laughs> this gentleman is probably, since the last time I spoke with him, still reviewing everything with an eyeglass. But uh, he was very surprised and very much intrigued with the description given by Father Michel of what's going to happen. In other words, the same description as described by uh, Conchita Gonzalez from Garavandal, mm -hmm. which really was the cornerstone of the description of this particular event. Garavandal, Conchita Gonzalez, the warning, the miracle on Pine Hill, and if humanity does not convert, the chastisement. There were other uh, approved and not so proved apparition sites and mystics who talked even indirectly, but not with as much detail of the illumination of conscience. Even Marie-Julie Genie mentioned on one brief, and I wrote that on my book, one brief line in one particular paragraph uh, about the illumination of conscience that's going to happen. But Father Michel Rodriguez goes into a great deal more detail. And that was what intrigued them as well. Um, the, the preciseness of what's going to happen, the timeline and so on and so forth, without giving dates. Correct. But... We were very surprised. Whenever, by the way, we hear on the podcast, uh, even um, uh, Monique Turnbull or um, Matt Milling, John McLean, or and so on, all those, or, or even John Henry Weston, when they talk about the uh, illumination of conscience and six weeks will take place, and then afterwards, uh, people will start believing, people will go into confession before those six weeks are gone. That comes exclusively from the revelation that was given to Father Michel, no other mystic or visionary, was told about the six weeks, was told about the fact that uh, all of a sudden um, scientists and the political community will join forces to explain that if all this was through uh, natural events that made mass hysteria or mass hallucination think that what they lived was in fact a reality, but in fact was not. All this comes from the revelation given by Father to Father Michel uh, Rodrigue, and they were very interested in the fact that it's a piece of a puzzle that fits perfectly in the grand picture of things. And that supposedly there would be a conflict sometimes shortly thereafter, those six weeks, that would start spreading and then the rest we know the story. But this fits perfectly in correlation, again, a piece of the puzzles 
that complete the big pictures with La Salette. According, those are not my words actually, but from the theologian who work, used to work with Father René Lanta, but it matches with to perfection with the apparitions of la, la the apparition singular of La Salette, the apparitions of through Marie Julie Jani, whom that was probably my hardest work in the book, in the largest yeah. chapter I wrote, because you have to turn and be very careful that the translation are in perfect context. You can never translate things too literally because it will distort the meaning. The same thing that happened with Tilly in Normandy, formally approved by the local bishop, is perfect. And it's very intriguing. And again, always in conformity with the dogma of the faith. Right, right. It's extraordinary. You know, well, they're I approved. Feel... These are approved by the church. Absolutely. La Salette has been formally approved. Tilly has been formally approved. Uh, La Frode has been informally approved by the local bishop of Fournier, but formally supported by His Holiness Leo XIII, and later by Pius XII, before he was elected as um, as a Pope of Rome. Yeah. So that's a lot of support from very big, uh, uh, big, uh, big guns, yeah. people in the chat. Yeah. yeah. Well, so what final message do you think we should deliver to our viewers? What you know, what lies ahead to the best of our knowledge? Welcome well, on. what's going to happen this year? According again. And since this is about Father Michel, I will echo as faithfully as I can what he told me. This year is going to be extremely difficult. Things will more seriously go from bad to worst. It's going to be alarming, particularly at the end of the year. And what Father Michel Rodriguez is um, asking everyone to do is first to keep a very cold head. In the message he delivered, he said, prepare yourselves for the nourishment of your bodies and to um, heal them in the future with the uh, uh, remedies that have been given to mankind given. Mm -hmm. through some of their saints. Mm -hmm. That means Marie-Julie Jenny, that means Father Michel, that means others. Now, we know about the, we know through uh, Christine Watkins about, and through Father Michel, whom she got this from, the, the not the raisins, oh. en français, ra grapes. No. Great. The oh, you're right. The blessed the grapes. grapes Yes, the Hawthorne comes from Marie-Julie Jenny. We know about that. Uh, get your bag of uh, Hawthorne leaves. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, uh, Father Michel always says, we must keep a very cold head, not being alarmed, place, and put all our stock at the feet of the cross in God. Uh, change, eliminate the mediocrities of one's lives. Go to Mass. Go to confession. Yes. Um, read the scriptures and wear upon yourselves as well. Father Michel requires or requests that we wear always a crucifix with a corpus blessed by your priest. The miraculous medal. Father Michel insists again and again, wear the miraculous medal. If you can, the San Benedict uh, medal, which mm -hmm. is an exorcist medal. Have everything blessed by your priest. Also wear the brown scapula. Father Michel calls it a treasure, and he's not wrong. Well, the promise that they're given in 1215 by the Blessed Virgin Mary to St. Simon Stark was, regardless of the state of your life, regardless of what you've done, of what you haven't done, regardless, all those who will wear the brand scapula at the moment of death will never, never the fires suffer the fires of hell. Never. And just to it reiterate, probably... this isn't just from Father Michel. Obviously, the miraculous medal went to, um, was that Mary Margaret Alacoque? No, I don't remember. Catherine Labouret. Catherine Labouret. Catherine Labouret. The... Yes. The scapular was given to that was Saint Simon Stock. See, I'm blowing it all. But these are given <laughs> to various people from our Lord and from our Mother. So it's not like, oh, you know, some priest made this up. He's just reaffirming the importance of doing these things to protect ourselves. He's doing they, what no other priest of ever so few do, and that's what that's what he's doing. Yeah. Uh, do you know a lot of priests who talk about the brown scapula? No, I know nothing. I don't. Zero, zero. He's doing what other priests do not do. They've been and silenced on have... for many years since I made my first communion. It's probably the last time I heard about it. Exactly. Hey, can I make a commercial break before I forget? Um, in your book, you talk about Kathleen Loney, who will help people get together these medicines and these hawthorn leaves and stuff. So I get a lot of emails from those of you watching. If you've watched my shows with Xavier before, a lot of you are saying, I don't think she got my email. I think she's today. I got someone said, I think she's a fraud. I haven't gotten my stuff. I just want to put this message out there um, that I 
personally have spoken with Kathleen Loney several times. Xavier knows her personally. And she, when she took on this responsibility of helping to collect um, these leaves and these medicines from heaven, little did any of us realize that the book that her name was mentioned in would sell thousands and thousands and thousands of copies around the world. And with great uh, love and care, she collects all the things. She begs everything. She writes personal notes. She has it blessed properly because some of them have different blessings. So she's behind about six months. So she's not the only place you can get stuff from. You, If you're interested, just go to individually and get the various things that have been mentioned. But the reason Kathleen has been so amazing is she says, here's all the things and I'm just going to send them to you in one package if you want them. So just wanted to put that out to kind of protect her name and let you all know she hasn't forgotten you. She's a one woman doing this out of the kindness of her heart, no pay. And she has brought on one other non-paid person to assist her. So um, just wanted to make sure I said that because I get Once more, she lost uh, recently her husband oh. and she got uh, a hip change. A hip uh, operation. That is why one or two of reasons why also she was late. Uh, as I said, um, many times I called her on the telephone and she was on the brink of tears. So she asked this. And by the way, she sells everything at cost. Sometimes mm -hmm. because uh, the distance, the shipping is miscalculated. She pays out of her own pocket and she yeah. lives on her pension. That woman um, knows and I introduced her to the granddaughter of the Marquis de la Francrie, who was the biographer of marie julie Jani. I'm friends with the granddaughter of the Marquis de la, Fran of the Marquis de la Gran Francrie's granddaughter. That's where I got the bulk of all my original source with all the documents that she was able to share with me and to discuss with me. So uh, she knew her. This is how she started. And just like uh, Christine said, please have mercy on the woman. She's trying very hard to catch up. And um, I'm getting. She's doing this as an act of faith, as an act of a uh, charity uh, for God. Exactly. So that's why I. There is a woman that I order some stuff from as well. She was a vendor at my disrupting the culture with truth conference in 2023 and she will be at my 2024 by the way go to truthspeakers.org and you will see the speakers that i have this october 12th coming in father chris alar christine watkins daniel o'connor mark mallet me um and she will be selling again there i will put a link in the show notes so that you have a second person second organization who is able to get you all the things that you want in, in one stop. So I'm just going to promote. But again, if you want to look for these items individually, feel free to do so. Um, just wanted to let you know. Xavier, name one thing you'll have our listeners do differently as a result of something that we talked about today. Uh, simply pray for those who you do not, you're not certain and pray that they be, if you think they're making a mistake, pray for them and that God illuminate them and let us all be in union in prayer. Amen. Amen. Um, you can find Xavier just on the show notes here. If you want to connect, you can connect through me and I'm doing that to protect him because he gets lots of people that want to reach out to him. So you can go through my website, breakfastwithbacon.com or, you know, comment in these show notes and I will forward emails to Xavier and he can answer as he has time. He gets them from around the world. So you've got to be patient there. I would love to have you sign up for my newsletter to let you know who are the guests going to be on my show uh, for different things that I've done. The amazing people that God is bringing to uh, to my show, the message that he's trying to get out. So breakfastwithbacon.com. Go ahead and like me on Instagram, Facebook, Rumble, and YouTube. So I'm trying to remember that, but... I think that's all I'm supposed to do. Is there anything else I'm supposed to promote besides Jesus? <laughs> Xavier, that's it, right? No, I think that's it. Thank you very much for inviting me. You've been oh, very kind. And thank you to all your viewers to, for your attention. Well, so Xavier is an expert, so I kind of don't even have to say all this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Christine Bacon. You've been watching Breakfast with Bacon. And I want to remind you, we both want to remind you to live your life on the sunny side up.